AutoCrit recently added some new features that make it a potential game changer for authors. I'm gonna walk you through what those changes are and whether they're actually worth buying the software over or if you should stick to a different software that I recommend for these similar functions. Now, if you followed my channel for a while, you know that I highly recommend AutoCrit for its editing features and reports. And I actually have a video in the works that I'll do pretty soon where I will walk you through how to take those reports and combine it with AI to actually improve your writing. But we're not gonna be talking about most of those features today. We're gonna to be talking about some new formatting features that came into AutoCrit recently. Formatting is one of those things that is notoriously difficult to do. And there have really only been two main competitors in this space for authors for a very long Long time. The two competitors out there are known as Vellum, which is only for Mac users, and Atticus, which is for basically any user. Atticus is my preferred formatting tool, and I use it quite frequently because it's not just a formatting tool, it is also a tool where you can do your writing and all of that. But it looks like Autocrit is actually going in that similar direction of wanting to be an all-in-one tool to help you do formatting in addition to the editing, which it already does. I am generally in favor of this because I feel like all authors have too many tools and the more tools that they have, the more they are getting in the way of their own writing. For instance, on this channel alone, I recommend three tools very highly. One of them is Novel Crafter, one of them is Autocrit, and one of them is Atticus. And all three of those require that you upload your entire manuscript there. And that's just tedious to me. I would much prefer it if I could have one software that could do all of it. Now, maybe in the future that will happen, but the problem with trying to do an all-in-one software is that you can sometimes lose a little bit of the specialization that you get from software. So that's the downside of trying to have an all-in-one software. While Autocrit is definitely trying here in the publishing space, let's actually take a look and see if it is sufficient for those who want to use Autocrit for formatting. So first of all, we're here inside of the AutoCrit program. Now up here is of course all of the different reports and other things that you would want to use for your editing process. I highly recommend these reports. They're very good, but we're not going to be talking about these today. We're going to be talking about this new tab that showed up here not too long ago called publishing. And when you click on that, it pulls up these two options here, book details and style theme. I will also point out that if you are using AutoCrit for formatting, there are also a few tools here inside of the main bar here that will also give you a few extra features. The main one that you want to be aware of is the scene break. So if you have a scene break inside of your text, for instance, right here, I've got a space where I know this is going to be a scene break. We're kind of moving from one area to another. So I want to have a scene break here. And so what you do is you just come here and make sure you press this button and it will add the scene break as these three little asterisks. And then you make sure that everything looks good there. And there's your scene break. Okay, you're going to want to have those embedded in your text where you can and where you need them because that's going to be important. But then we come here to the publishing tab, go to, we'll go to book details first. And this is where you put all of the information about your book that you need. And this is important information too, because without it, you're not going to be able to have a title page or anything for your formatted book. So let's go ahead and put some of this in here. This is my book, Fall of the Fairy. And for subtitle, I'll just give it the series title. We'll just say the Fairy Queen book five author jason hamilton you can put in a book description if you want but i'm going to skip that for now same with subjects publisher name myth hq llc and you can add a publisher image here if you want you can add isbns if you want i usually because i don't generally recommend you use your own isbns which is another topic for another day i'm usually leave those blank you can also upload your book cover here and i do happen to have a book cover for this book already so i'm gonna go ahead and upload that so now i have basically everything i need here inside of the book details, but there are other things you can come up here to title. So if you have a specific way you want to format your title page, you could do that here, but it will also automatically generate one for you. Here's the copyright page. Now this was interesting to me because I'm pretty sure this is the exact same copyright that we have in Atticus, but yeah, whatever. So you put in your copyright details if you want to have a more robust copyright page you can this is just a very simple one so you could just put in the year of publication by author name and so forth and then you can also go here to the table of contents and select whether you want table of context page on the export or no you can also add new pages here if you need to so page one let's say we have like an introduction or something that you want to put in here that isn't included here in the main text 
text, you can put that in here. I'm just gonna remove that for now. But you have the option to just add other random pages here as needed. So I'm gonna go ahead and click out of this. So that's everything for the book details for now. The next thing to look at is the style and the theme. Now this is one major criticism I have of this feature is that it does not come with pre-made templates. So if you come to this tab that says templates, oh, there's nothing here. You can create a new theme, which will be for yourself and you can configure it and everything, but there's nothing to kind of get you started. Atticus has things like 17, 20 or so pre-made templates. I know they're working on more and you can take any of those templates. You can modify them to your heart's content. In fact, I'll show you. These are all templates that they have, including a number that I've created myself. So this isn't all Atticus templates. Some of these are mine, but there's a whole lot here to choose from and they're all really good. And in theory with Atticus, you can literally just select one and that's it. Like you don't necessarily have to do anything else after you selected your template, as long as you're good with the template that it has and there's nothing you wanna change. And you can't do that in Autocrit, so that's a big thumbs down for me for that particular thing, but not necessarily a deal breaker because you can still create your own themes and if you spend some time, you could probably get something similar to what Atticus has. So let's go to the active settings and walk through everything we have here. So we have first for the font, we can maintain the fonts in the document. So if you've already set the font here inside of the document, which is currently set to Arial, which I wouldn't necessarily do, you can do that or you can set new fonts for the export, which is actually what I would do. I usually find that when I'm editing a book, I need a different font from the book that will be actually published because sometimes the font choice for when you are actually editing makes a difference in how well you can spot editing errors. Fun fact, Comic Sans, as much as you might not like it, is supposedly a really good font for editing because if for some reason you're able to like spot mistakes and things better with Comic Sans. So just a fun fact there. So I'm going to say set new fonts for the export. And I know for the paragraph font, I know my favorite is Crimson. These are all like open source fonts and things like that. Crimson I like. We have 12 point font, which is probably a little bit big. So I'm gonna bring that down to 11 points. And then we can also select the chapter title font and everything, which you probably wanna do because a chapter title font in Arial is gonna be very ugly. So let's go through the options we have here. Maybe we'll go with, uh, Levine, I have no idea how to pronounce that. We can always adjust the size. I'll just leave it for now. I'm just gonna make all of the headings the same font style for now. Most of these aren't even important and we'll just run with that. Now here we have the option to add special formatting for the first line of your chapter. So you can have a drop cap, which makes the first letter a little bit bigger, or you can lead in small caps. Sometimes that's nice to have, like the first line is in the small caps and you can do both too. So I'm just gonna do both so you can see it. And same for a scene break. So after a scene break, you can have it do a drop cap or lead in small cap. For this one, I'm just gonna lead in small caps. And then we have the chapter heading alignment. So that's whether, you know, if you have chapter one, chapter two, is it gonna be left, centered, or right? I want that to be centered. You can select the paragraph formatting that you have in the document or set new paragraph formatting. Let's see what happens when we select new paragraph formatting. Uh, it gives us the option to paragraph indents for export, paragraph spacing for export. So if we want spaces between chapters, which is more common in nonfiction, but we want indents for this because it's a fiction novel and you can select the space of the index. You can select the line spacing. I'm gonna leave that one the way it is. You can select whether you want the alignment to be justified, which uh, sure, let's just go with that. And then we have the scene break graphic. Now from here, you can have the default, which is just the three little asterisks, or you can add a custom image. Now they do not have any templates here other than the default. And for most people, I don't recommend having the asterisks asterisks asterixes, however you pronounce that. I don't actually recommend that for most authors because it's a little bit ugly, it's a little bit overdone. And so I do recommend you have some kind of graphic, something a little bit more elegant or fitting in the genre of your book. But unfortunately they don't have any options here, which is another big tick against this in comparison to Atticus, which has a whole library of these that you can pick from. I think most of those are good enough for most books. There may be some instances where you need something custom made for your own book, but in most cases, all of the the options that Atticus has, and they have quite a few, are good there. So this is actually something that I don't really like about this type of formatting. Next, we have the header footer layout, and they give you a couple of options here. Atticus does this as well. Right now it's set to just blank, and I would say we probably want to have, let's just do author and title. So we have the page numbers here in the corner and the author and title uh, up above the text. So we can go with that. And down here we have the paper trim size. So this is just, they don't have very many 
Atticus has a lot more, but they do have the most important ones. My favorite is five by eight. I know a lot of people do 5.5 by 8.5. Six by nine is also popular as a like hardcover size, but I'm just gonna go with five by eight for now. And then we have margins. And right now it's set to one inch margins all the way around. And this, is unfortunately the deal breaker for me. What they do not have here is gutter margins. Now, if you're unfamiliar, any book has varying margins depending on what it's looking at. The margins out here on the side are going to be smaller than the margins here in the center. And that is because you've got this spine and the crease and everything and it needs more space on this inside part of the book so that it can you know look attractive and that can be a little bit difficult to code into a program because it has to alternate from one page to the other if it's the left hand page of the book then the gutter margins on the right hand side if it's the right hand page then the gutters on the left hand side and so on and so it has to alternate and that's difficult to do and it does not have gutter options here it just has regular margins margins. And by the way, one inch margins is way too big for what you need on a regular book. So we would have to modify these anyway. For most books, you'd want it to be at 0.5. But again, the gutter margin would need to be bigger, but I can't just say, all right, the left side will be larger because it needs to alternate. Sometimes it'll be the left, sometimes it'll be the right. So now that we've done this, let's go ahead and look at what it looks like when we export. Now the ebook's going to be different. Like most of this work that we've been doing has been for the PDF version, which is the one we would upload to get a print on demand book. And we can preview what this will look like here for the ebook. And yeah, it looks fine. Maybe I would want to decrease the line height a little bit, but on, on the whole, this is fine. Then the PDF version you can preview here, which actually it doesn't look like the PDF version is very different. It just adds the page number and the title on top. But let's actually export a PDF. So the way you do this is you just come here and say download PDF. You can also access it here from the export option here on the right hand side and we can go ahead and download the thing here now there are a couple of issues i can see already First of all, if you are preparing a book to go into publication via print on demand or something like that, you actually don't want the book cover here available at the very start because that will be on your book cover. We don't want it on the inside as well, especially because it'll probably be in black and white. So that's an issue. We have the main title page here and it doesn't look like the title page has its own fonts. Maybe that's something we missed, but this looks like it's an aerial font. And so we would need to fix that. And then this business name is way too big. Same with the copy copyright that seems to be in an aerial font if we come down here we got the table of contents the first page follow the fairy page one is blank so that's a little bit odd and then we have page one so there is a little bit too much spacing here we do have the right fonts here and that's fine we have chapter one this is a design issue you don't actually have the page number and this top header on your chapter heading page so that's like a standard heading issue that that you wouldn't have here. This is kind of like weirdly off to the side here. It's got larger margins here. I'm wondering if I if it got my margins wrong. It's all consistent. It's not like flipping back and forth. So you can see there are a bunch of issues here. And I know from having worked at Kindlepreneur when Dave Chesson and his team was working on Atticus, that it's very difficult to code some of these things. And so right now I cannot recommend, especially because of that gutter margin issue, I cannot recommend these particular features in Autocrit. Now, once again, I want to say I highly recommend Autocrit for pretty much everything else. Everything it does for the editing process is highly useful. And if you want to get a lifetime account, you can get one below and support the channel. However, I think they jumped the gun a little bit with the rollout of these features. I think they are half baked, like literally half baked. Like it's not even close to being ready for public consumption, unfortunately. But I do applaud what they are trying to do because until now, the only way you can get a good formatting tool is through Atticus or Vellum. I would love it if we could see more all-in-one tools that could just do everything that you need it to do. And it seems like Autocrit is trying to do that, but it needs a little bit more time to get there. And anyone at Autocrit, if you are interested in some consulting, please talk to me and I am happy to give you my thoughts and experience with these kind of things. But unfortunately, I can't recommend these particular features at this time. You still need a program like Atticus. I'll link to Atticus down below. That is not an affiliate.
affiliate link because they don't have an affiliate program yet, but I still recommend it. I still recommend people buy it. It is also a one-time purchase. Now, if you're new to AutoCrit and you have no idea what I'm talking about with all of these editing features, then you should definitely check out this video here, which goes through all of those and why I do still recommend AutoCrit, even though I don't particularly care for these features yet, I'm sure they will get better. So go check that video out and I will see you there.